Hey everyone, my name is Emily. My name is Amanda. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Today, we are gonna show you how to fish when it's too rough to go offshore. Yes, we're gonna be fishing around mangrove trees, mangrove islands, we're gonna be fishing out back if you're in the Florida Keys and you can't go offshore and go fishing, maybe not even offshore, maybe you can't go to the reef, maybe you can't catch yellowtails, you can't catch the mangroves, it's too rough, where do you go, what do you do, but you still wanna go out and have fun and catch fish. That's what we're gonna show you today. As you can see, we are out back, is what we call it, which is the Gulf of Mexico. And we are around a bunch of mangrove islands in about, what, 10 feet of water, Amanda? We are in 10 feet of water around a bunch of mangrove islands, and we are anchored, if you can see, close to this island. There's actually, underwater, there is a mangrove tree that, I don't, I don't think it's a mangrove tree, some kind of tree that fell and got carried away in Hurricane Irma that we have found. So we're fishing this mangrove tree that's underwater, but if you don't have a mangrove tree to fish, fish up against the islands. Mangroves like to hang out. If there's mangroves on the islands, the ma mangrove snappers like to hang out with the <laughs> mangrove trees. Right, so mangroves, <laughs> also known as gray snappers. Yes, they like to <laughs> hang out up against the islands and it's a great place to come back and fish. You're a little bit protected from the wind. And another option, of course, is to fish the bridges. We do have a bridge fishing video, so go ahead and check that out. I will link it in the description box. But today, just to change things up, we're kind of fishing out back by the mangrove islands. We have our chum bag hanging over the side. This is our chum bag. And it is going into the current for the mangrove snappers to come and eat. Once the mangroves have been, once the chum has been going for 10, 20 minutes, that's when we're gonna start putting some bait and a line in the water. We'll show you our rigs and everything that we're doing to catch these gray or mangrove snappers, whichever it is that you wanna call them. Amanda's finishing up this rig right here. Really not. So today's reel of choice. This is actually a 5,500, but I would personally be using maybe 4,500s, 3,500s fishing out here. You don't need anything big. It's just, we are heavy offshore fishermen. So most of our gear is 5,500 and up. We have a, I believe this is like a 10 to 15 pound snapper rod, fast action. And um, all of our reels are spooled with braid. So we are spooled with 30 pound, 30 pound braid. And this is a 20 pound four liter. I have 10 feet of it followed by a little snapper jig. This is actually the circle hook kind. It um, is. I don't really have a preference over a circle hook or not, but um, I would say this is 3 8 ounce off the top of my head. That's the <laughs> size I would go with. And we're gonna start fishing the area. And another option, this is actually another 5,500, but we are going to set this up as a shark rod. So I have 60 pound, mono leader followed by wire which is i have a little swivel here hay wire twist i want to say this is number probably three three wire and this looks like a 60 circle hook that's kind of rusted out we made these rigs a while ago we're recently just found them and we keep our fingers crossed so <laughs> go ahead throw a shark rig out throw a big fish rod out and then fish your snaps at the same time. Today's bait of choice is Ballyhoo. Ballyhoo, guys. I like Throwing to get rid of the over. head. Got some ice on him. I'm gonna cut like half inch to inch size chunks to start and kind of see what's down there. This is the part of the fishing trip where we're doing research just as much as you would be. So I don't know what we're gonna catch. I don't know what's gonna bite. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a smaller chunk of Ballyhoo. Come on, let's go. This is let's the go. first time we're dropping a bait down and we don't know what's out there. Let me check my So you casted it out. I casted it out, so I casted it out into the chum slick, and I'm already on the bottom because it's only 10 feet of water. And I have my bail open, but I'm kind of just holding onto the line, trying to wait to see if I feel any bites, see what's going on. There we go. I you got, got a bites. bite? You got, I bites? got a bite. Yep. All right. There's a fish on there. Fish on there. Yep, there's a fish Catch on there. Catch this fish. Catch this fish. Oh yeah, we got a oh, fish. Oh yeah. That wow. was fast. That was very fast. That was very, very fast. Woo! Ooh, this is, is, oh, it's a barracuda. 
You got a Kuda? I think so. Oh, yep. I just watched him swim away. Oh, no, it was a snapper. It was a really big snapper? Yeah. Wow. OK, so you want to know what happened? I just watched it. A what happened? A snapper ate my bait, and then I saw a barracuda take the snapper. snapper and took the whole thing. So with that in mind, we're going to take our drag. Crank it down. Do twist. <laughs> crank, crank, crank. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's tight. So we're going to fish tight drag today. The purpose of that is we're going to reel our fish in way faster. So if you're starting to get barracuda off a lot or sharked, tighten your drag down. And let's try this again. Second cast of the day. This is live. We're not lying to you and faking and pretending like this is the second cast and we've been here for hours. <laughs> I promise. No, guys. You guys, if you watch our channel, I hope you see that we genuinely take you with us. We're showing you our successes and our failures, and that was a failure. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can get another one to bite and hopefully the barracuda didn't scare away all my fish. That would be sad. So if you look at my line, Bail's open. I'm just holding the line. I'm not letting it out. I'm not freelining it like I'm yellow tailing. Okay, so I like to wait and feel those nibbles. Once I feel those nibbles, let you let go. them have it. Let, let them run it. with it. See, see how the line's going out? I know there's a fish there. But now, oh, I jacked it from him. You jacked it from him? Okay, so I had a bite. I had a fish on. He was interested. And I reeled really fast and really hard because I was worried about the barracuda. But it went against me. It's fishing. So the first time I went out, drag was too loose, couldn't get to my fish, barracuda stole it. Second time, I was probably a little bit too aggressive because I was afraid of the barracuda. Let's go for round three, but also what I think we should do, since we know that there's a barracuda out there, I vote that we put out something for the barracuda to eat. 100%. Barracuda. How about we put out that wire rig? Let's put out that wire rig. And you know what else we brought? Check this out, guys. Look at this. We have, well, okay, we do have a bonita, which, we don't want that right now. I don't really care for that. What I was talking about was these yellowtail snappers, guys. These are carcasses of yellowtails that we kept because we figured we would use them for some time we wanted to go shark fishing or in today's situation, catch a barracuda. There's our yellowtail carcass. Come on. Let's try to catch this thing. Catch this barracuda. So I'm just going to, if you see this is a carcass, it's already filleted. I'm going to hook it through the top of the head. The top of the head. These are honestly not my favorite hooks. They're kind of tiny. I'm going straight through the, there we go. There you just go. through the top of the head like that. Let's check this out, let me see this. You guys go, and just so you guys know, this is a haywire twist for the side tied to the hook, and then a haywire twist tied to the barrel swivel, and this knot here is a uni knot. Our yellow tail is casted out, and I bet we're gonna catch this thing really fast. I got a floating yellowtail carcass. Yellowtails are our favorite fish to eat as humans. As humans? <laughs> and for fish. For like fish. sharks, barracudas, they like to eat the same stuff we like to eat. Like I guarantee if we went fishing and we were fishing the reef and fishing for chubs, which really doesn't have good meat, but barracudas could care less. They're like, yeah, you can have the chubs. But we go fishing, go to catch yellowtails, and barracudas come out and they're like, I want that. I want some barracuda. What I'm gonna do with this while I'm waiting for the barracuda, I'm gonna put in a rod holder. Drag's a little, well, that's pretty heavy drag, actually. We have a wire? Yeah, we have a wire. Let's get a wire. Let's get a wire. The wire technique. Let's see this wire, man. Let me show everybody. Hey, show them the wire. This is copper wire that you can buy at any tackle store. This is nine inch copper rigging wire that people used to rig their ballyhoos with. But here you go, Amanda. Show them the trick. Okay, this is the trick. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna take this wire. Let's look at my reel. We are going to wrap around the reel, or you could do around the rod, whichever you prefer. So we can go around the rod this time. Okay. Ooh, we're on. Never okay. mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you that later. Okay. Do you think this is a shark or a barracuda? Uh, I have no idea. I don't know either. Is this drag okay? Yeah, yeah it's, it's fine. Good. It's good. Guys, you ready to go fishing? Because <laughs> we're fishing. We promise we'll get to that wire trick in a sec. <laughs> After we catch this fish, we'll, we'll show you that wire trick. We will show you the wire trick. So my vote is shark. Your vote is shark? Shark. What's yeah, your vote? Yeah, I, I agree. Like? I think it's a shark. I think if it was a cuda, it wouldn't have ran so fast right away. Yeah, cudas run really fast. <laughs> Our job today is to show you guys how to fish. How to fish when it's too rough to go offshore or to the reef. And if you already know how to or fish. Or if you have a small boat and you want to change it up. 
or if you know how to fish, how, how to something fun to watch on a Saturday. <laughs> on a Saturday. Oh boy. Should we run this one down? Well, we do have a ditch anchor. I think this is a big fish. Yeah. I vote ditch anchor. All right, ditch anchor it is. Okay. This is a big fish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ditch our anchor. I'm gonna put this down so you can watch Amanda. I'm gonna go throw that anchor. You might wanna go faster. pretty intense. So I'm literally in reverse backing up to this fish. We threw the anchor. We have a ditch anchor set up right now, which I did show you guys how to do that in our bridge fishing video. Hey, can you help me with the seaweed? Amanda needs help with the seaweed coming. So now I'm backing up to this fish. Now I could drive forward and have Amanda up on the bow. It's really personal preference. We like to back up to fish because our bow is not a walk around. You got a shark? Yes, I see it. We see it. It might be a bull shark. Oh boy. Or a lemon. Oh yeah. Bull it's shark. It's a big one. I don't know. I see the shadow. Wow. Hi. You doing okay, Amanda? What? You doing okay? I'm doing great. This is the ride of my life. <laughs> he's coming up. He could be. I think he's a lemon shark. Yes, he's at the surface. He's Look at that. tired. I see the shadow out there. My favorite fish story. Let me tell the story, Amanda. I don't know. It's so tell me. I know. Just wait. Is when we didn't really know how to wahoo fish. Oh. And we went out on a really rough day. And like, it was really rough. And we're only in a 23 foot boat. And we were jamming out to Taylor Swift. You remember that? <laughs> yes. We were jamming out to Taylor Swift. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story. So we were out wahoo fishing. And we had no idea what we were doing. Like, no idea. This was way back when. Way back when, before the Gale Force Twins were the Gale Force Twins. Yes. We were like, I mean, we were always the Gale I Force really want to catch a wahoo. And our old high school football thing coach gave us a bunch of wahoo gear that he had never used, or used once. He was like, I'm never going to use this. You can have it. We didn't know what we were doing. We hardly knew how to tie a bimini. But we did. <laughs> so we tied a bimini. We went straight from like 30 pound mono to a bimini, and straight from the bimini to a cigar lead. And straight from the cigar no, we lead. Didn't have a lead. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. I'm positive. We just threw a lure out. Really? I'm positive. Then so it was. Then it was. Yes, we did. Okay. I don't think so, but go ahead. Whatever it was, it was straight from the bimini. Either it was not proper. Either to the cigar lead, which apparently we didn't have, or to the lure. To the lure. No fluoro. No fluoro. No leader. No wire. Well, this was on 30 pound. We were like, I, I don't know. I think this works. And we were like, well, we know you have to go fast when you walk through fish. So we're like 12 knots. At 12 knots, which is the fastest our reels can handle, with 30 pound mono. Yeah, these reels were like regular trollers. With 30 pound mono and a lure. And so we're jamming out to Taylor Swift. <laughs> and I looked over to Amanda and I go, maybe I should Google how to do this. So I was like, maybe we should Google how to do this. She's like, she's like, she's, I'm like, do you think we're doing this right? I don't know. Maybe I should Google it. And I, I kid you not, I'm not making this up. The second that I said that, like that line started screaming. Oh, the shark's almost here. And it was a wahoo, and we were ecstatic. Yeah, like, oh I don't think I had. Oh, and, and then I gaffed it. I, I tried to gaff it three times. I failed. Like, like I got the line wrapped completely around the gaff. Oh, I remember that. So yeah, so it was like the, the line, line was, was like around like the gaff like this. <laughs> we're like, we're losing this. Somehow, some way, I got them like in the teeth. It was crazy. In the jaw, because I couldn't, the line was so wrapped around the gaff that I was like, well, I'm just gonna try to gaff this the best that I can. And I gaffed it in the mouth and uh, pulled them out. And that is our favorite fish story, which is today's twin, twin truth. truth. We had someone ask us for our twin truth, what our favorite fish story was. And I was thinking about it, and that's a no brainer. So we first didn't know what we were ever doing. Caught. First of all, whoever we caught, didn't know what we were doing. Jamming out to Taylor Swift. You know, trying to Google what we were doing, and before I could even Google it, apparently we were doing something right. Apparently we did it right. And now I have videos on how to catch wahoo. Well, how far have we come? If you guys want to learn to catch a wahoo, check out our planer, how to planer fish with wine on the Here's the thing: we know how to catch a wahoo because we know how not to catch a wahoo. 
very, very true, guys. Now you you gotta get out of You gotta screw up. You gotta, you gotta learn. Fish is okay. close. Let's see if this, <laughs> this shark is getting tired. I've been this thing for like, how long has it been? <laughs> I don't I feel like it's been over 20 minutes. Oh, I thought it was about an hour. Oh, yeah, over 30. <laughs> Between 30 minutes and an hour. Okay, his head's up, so can we back up to him really fast? Yeah, let's go. I mean, he's getting tired. Leader's right through the top rod guide. All right. Well, it is considered a catch. We officially caught a shark today. Yeah, that was horrible. Yeah, there we go. Here is the shark. Wow. Okay, it is right here. Look at that head. Wow. That is a massive shark. Holy cow. If you, have, if you ever don't have gloves, or even if you do have gloves, don't take wraps, guys, when you leader a fish. I wouldn't recommend it unless it's a smaller fish. Just grab it with your hand and pinch the line. And when he wants to run, like I'm gonna let him run right now. It's a much safer way of leadering a fish, especially if you don't have experience leadering fish. Guys, check this fish out. Wow. Yep. Look at those teeth. Was I threw the rod holder, the rod, the, rod, the rod and rod holder to help Emily leader the fish and get some video, and the fish went to run, and uh, this happened. Do you think he's still on there? I don't know. Let's find out. Here, hold it, hold this. I hope for his sake he oh, broke off. I hope off. he's not. I agree. Okay, oh yeah, he broke gone. off. Good, good. He broke off. He's free. He's swimming away. That was a beautiful fish. That was an insane fight. <laughs> wow. You ready? Just like that, we got a baby! Let's bring him in the boat. Okay. And this is a mangrove snapper. This Hold is... Hold on, let me just say something. Isn't it amazing that we went out there, we caught this huge shark. We caught this huge lemon shark. And we come back, we anchor up, and just like that, we caught a mangrove snapper. This is what we were trying to do for you guys, but we got distracted with the shark. Let's so measure him. Man mangrove snappers are also known as gray snappers. And oh, oh he's, he's a, keeper. a keeper. So back here, back here, mango snappers only have to be 10, 10 inches. inches. I'm going to release him anyways. We're going to release him, but you can keep five per person. So the is. regulations are different depending on where you're fishing. So make sure back you look here, that up properly. Back here, you can catch five per person at 10 inches a piece. And th I mean, that fish, they will have fillets on them. They'll you be delicious. Them, they'll, it's delicious. You can fry them up whole and you can come back here catch your fish, or right off of a mangrove island. And that's really what we wanted to show you today. If you look past all the seaweed and seagrass, you can see all the little baby mangroves. There's one, there's one, they're around. There you go. Look at that. Take a look, we're fishing off this mangrove island in the grassy bottom, and we are catching fish. So it's definitely action fishing. I wouldn't necessarily call it pack in the pool or anything, but it's I a great place disagree, to agree. Emily. Emily disagrees. Well, we just caught a keeper, just like it was no big deal. I think you could easily come out here, get a dinner, That's and true. go back. Well, especially in the winter time, the mangroves are more back here in the winter. We're in this dead of summer, so most of them are actually on the reef. But it's a great place you can come and get some action in, fill the cooler if you want, and keep fishing. Got one running with it. Ready? Fish on. Got him on! Come on! Get him on! He's a smaller guy. I don't care. Oh, He's there a fish. He is. He's a fish. Okay. He's a fish. Something I want to point out about this one, 
is we'll look at the hook in a second. Once he calms down, let's give this fish a measure. It's definitely not a keeper, but I'll show you guys how to measure a snapper. When you're measuring a snapper, you're gonna go from the mouth and oh, he's oh, a, keeper. He a keeper. And you're gonna pinch the tail. And snappers are total length, so he's actually 10 and a half inches, just about. So this is a keeper mangrove snapper for dinner. However, we're gonna let him go because we don't eat mangrove snappers for dinner. But also known as gray snappers, a key feature of these fish is this dark eye, dark eye, dark line over their eye. Ready to let him swim away? Let him go, let him go. Come check this rig out. Ooh, we still got the bait on there. But what I did was I switched the jig to a really small jig. This is typically a jig I would use to catch yellowtail snappers, but you can see them in the chump slick. Look at this chump slick. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. So I figured, you know what? If I want to target the ones in the chump slick, I'm going to have to use a smaller jig, something that'll stay on the surface. There typically aren't as large in the chump slick, but it's a great way. You can still catch keepers. Clearly I caught a 10 incher and it's a good action for the kids. If you have kids on the boat, you guys just want to catch and release, just do lighter jigs. You'll catch more. You'll definitely catch more this way, but maybe not as many keepers. The other way, it's more like when you do, it probably is a keeper, would be my opinion. Do you agree, Amanda? I think so. I think so. I almost forgot to mention because we were in the middle of this when we had that very large toothy shark <laughs> come and take our bait, how to use the copper wire method. Now, let's say we want to put a live bait out or a carcass on a rod. Don't do it for mangrove snappers. Don't do it for yellowtail snappers. It's more of like your big fish rod. I'm going to throw it out and wait, okay? So for the sake of this conversation, let's pretend I have a very large carcass going down in the water. So no one has to sit on a rod like we were doing earlier when we were trying to catch that barracuda. If you have a live bait out there and you don't want someone sitting there with their finger on it waiting for the bite, this is the alternative. We are going to put the wire around the rod. I'm going to twist it. You see this? Twist it up. Perfect. Just keep twisting. Just keep tw just keep twisting. What's that? Just keep swimming. Just keep twisting. You're, you're seeing Dory. I'm Whatever. Seeing Dory. Yeah. Okay. So we okay. have it twisted. So let's look now, at it. Let me see it really quick. Twist it around the rod. Okay. So what's next step? Now we're gonna open the bale and we're gonna take the line. We're going to hold it in the copper wire. Just like that. So if we have a live fish swimming out there and he gets eaten. Guess what happens? The copper trips and that fish that just ate your live bait or your carcass or whatever you had out there sitting for your big fish rod is what we call it, has time to eat the bait. So by the time you run over, you close the bale, you reel, and you got a fish on. We were trying to demonstrate that earlier, but clearly we ended up getting bit before we could even demonstrate this. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please leave your thoughts in the comments. This is a really, really great way to fish when it's too rough offshore at the reef, wherever. Come out back, be protected by the mangrove trees. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Facebook Instagram, Instagram, YouTube. YouTube. Thanks guys.